your brain, you're in the nuts domain. Come on in, it's about to begin. Hi everybody, and welcome to Nerds Domain. Uh, this week I'm here with Johnny. Hi. Scott. Hi. Justin. Hi. And Shirley. Hello. And I'm of course Matt. And we're going to do a What You Doing? Um, and so we'll start with books. Jesse, you've been reading, right? You can read. Oh, that's... Yes. Well, I always <laughs> pick the best people to start with. Go ahead. Um, well, the books I've been reading lately are information stuff on uh, how to raise bees and create... Uh, Beehive? Bee farms. I, I, Fantastic I, reading, isn't it? It is. It's I, riveting. I, I'm going to have a uh, a beehive by oh, summer. So what's all, the, what's all the buzz? <laughs> uh, really? so that, that's, that's where you're going with? Okay. Somebody well, has to do it. You know well, hang on. Who's got to pick? Otherwise, it's going to rot on the boat. Exactly. I guess. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's basically all I've been reading. Fascinating though, isn't it? It, it is. Now, it are, you is. Go with, are you gonna go with one hive with with uh, multiple levels? With multiple levels, yeah. Or one frame, or one hive, or, or a single level with multiple frames? Are you gonna do multiple frames, multiple levels, or? I think I want to do multiple frames and multiple levels. Nice. Yeah, do you have a source for your bees yet? I don't. Okay. I might have a name or two. That would be great. Because I did that reading and research about two and a half years ago. It's, it's fascinating. It is. They, they, as a child, they kind of terrorized me, and oh. I, mean, I feel like now it'll help out. And I, oh, this is therapeutic. It, you, not just that, but I also want honey. Johnny, what is I was going to say, are you going to make your own honey? Yeah. What's the yeah. name of the movie that Film Sack did where it's like bees, 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 bees millions of bees? The Wicker Man. Uh, Johnny Boy. One, no, The Wicker Man was, was it bees. The yeah, no, there was that another one, really bad one. It was. Tommy it was Boy. in the fifties. No, this is when they get out of the car. Here, follow my lead. Bees! Yeah. No, it's no. not that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it was a 1950s sci-fi. It was bad or whatever. So, wow. um, you mean the, the sci-fi named Bees? It no. might be called Bees. It might be. There's another one, The Swarm. There's also one called The Birds. But that's that's, that's, that's more animals. about... Well, the birds, birds and the bees, maybe. That, that's more, no, actually, that's more birds than All right, birds so let's bees. refocus here. Jesse, would you like to name any of those books that you could suggest? I don't have them memorized, the names of them. I don't look at the titles. I'm He's just... like, the bee book. <laughs> Shirley, what are you reading? I am currently still on The Hobbit. Are you reading Color World? Well, how no. far are you in The Hobbit? I haven't started that yet. Where are um, you in The Hobbit? They just left Rivendell. Oh, okay. Mm, okay. Yeah. So, so still I'm a slow reader. Movie. I told you. <laughs> you guys know this. Yeah. Well, still in parts of the first movie. Mm-hmm. But we're still probably gonna we're probably gonna talk about adaptations later, even he, though we won't be talking. I'm about just the waiting Hobbit. for the He told Evans me I couldn't part. talk That's about the Hobbit. So. Yeah, he told me I couldn't talk about the Hobbit either because okay. I'd start turning the table over. Scott, what have you been reading? Um, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Oh. Uh, I heard Ooh, that's yeah. really, really good. Um, so far, it has kicked me down a flight of stairs twice. I recommend yep. everyone read really? it often. Yep. Uh, let's let's put it this way: I'm going to have to go back and reread it. And normally, I have a very good absorption rate on all of these things. Mm-hmm. Um, this is one where I'm like in chapter one. I got all of the goosebumps and my skin crawled because he said something that I went, wait, 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 go back, go back, go back. And I was already onto something else, but I was like, oh, wait, shiny. Wait, this is a good idea. So, I mean, uh, it's by Robert T. Kiyos- uh, Kiyosaki. Mm-hmm. And uh, it is flipping amazing. And it's about relearning how to see the world and deal with it, right? Nope. No, it's, about it's about financial um, IQ. What you need to do, the ideas of a well educated PhD dad. And a dropped out of eighth grade or eighth grade or tenth grade dad who how one of them thinks about money being a you know rob from the rich give to the poor the government should help us we should do all of these things we should have all of the backing there should be financial programs to help ever every like the redistribution of wealth if everything is you know if everybody if we make so much we should be able to and and the argument has been made if we make so much and we're so prosperous in the world as we are today we have a, the financial means to feed everyone in the world for the next 30 years and not have anybody have to work like why don't we do that versus the idea of okay if you become financially literate if you increase your financial IQ you understand how Corporations, accounting, finance, law, money, how all that works, 
then you don't necessarily need to stay in the nine to five, work for somebody else, make your money, make your salary for you and make money for them. So that's not what I thought it was. Oh, it's really I thought, good. I thought that, um, I actually thought the book was about challenging the uh, mindset that some men have that they have to make a lot of money and support their families to be a good father and husband and things like that. Mm. And I thought it like challenged that and say to the point where it said, okay, you can just spend time or, you know, whatever it matters on the quality, not. Well, and I think that, that book might, is not anything about what I thought it was about. That this might factor in later because he has yet to get to one of the later chapters is Time is Your Greatest Asset, which is understandable. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've always been of the mindset, I've always been of the opinion that everybody talks about, well, you have, if you're going to work, you got to maintain a strict work-life balance. Like, you can't spend all your time working, and you can't spend all your time at home doing fun things. you got to have, you know, you got to work hard, you got to play hard. It's that work-life balance. And personally, I think work-life balance is a crock of BS. Um, you have life. If you choose to spend 16 hours a day doing whatever this job is for whatever the pennies are they're going to hand you, whether that's pennies, dollars, or hundreds of thousands of dollars, it's your life. That's a choice. Mm-hmm. You need to balance. Here's the value that I'm getting out of here. Here's the value that I'm getting out of there. Right. As a father of two, a boy and a girl, I believe wholeheartedly that there is incredible value that is very, very hard to match with the dollar, right. with spending time with my family. Family does come first, but we all have to, in some capacity, earn to provide for that family so that we can continue to have a house to live in, a car to drive around, you know, good things, yeah. good food. So, but the idea of, well, it's work-life balance. No, it's not. Work is part of your life. Whether you work for someone else or whether you work for yourself, that's a keen distinction, and it's one that he goes into regularly. Um, you been reading anything else besides that? Or are you listening to that on audio book? Yeah. Well read? By someone we might know, or just um, let me look. some some random audio uh, yeah. narrated by Tim Wheeler. Okay, I like him. I mean, he's got a good voice. He's got a good cadence. It's it's working for me. Not quite like Crush It. Uh, well, Gary Vaynerchuk does his own stuff, and uh, <laughs> yeah, he does. yeah, and he goes, you know, I'm going to get off topic here. I'm going to go out of the book for a second. I'm going to go off script, and <laughs> and he gives you these great nuggets. Yeah, it really does, and and it, especially with Crush It, which is something I'm reading. We'll go just switch over to Matt. Matt, what, yeah, are, you Matt, what are you reading? Um, and Crush It, so I'm reading Crush It. It's all about um, defining your brand and really um, exploding out there and being, seizing your passion, seizing your passion, and being the thing you want to be. Which kind of goes along in that same concept of of time management. But the the guy that wrote the book, which didn't write it, he had a ghostwriter because he recorded himself talking about it. Or talk, reading the or writing the book by talking, and then had somebody else write it down for him. Now he's reading the book for the audio book. He's like, "All right, I wrote this like nine months ago, so this is all changed. Let me tell you about social media now." Yeah, um, he's really he's really really good with what he's doing. He clearly has a passion for other people getting their passion. Um, he runs a, a YouTube show, channel called Wine Library TV. Um, that's just phenomenal, I guess. And it, he's built millions off of recommending not high class wine, not the thousand dollar bottle of wine. He's recommending bottles of wine that are good, yeah, that, that he enjoys. That I can yeah. buy at Walmart. Oh no, <laughs> no, no you can go to Marsh. <clears throat> the Trimbach um, yeah, Gewurztraminer yeah. is like sarcastic. twelve buck, between twelve and eighteen bucks, and it's one of the best wines I've ever had. Yeah. What kind is it? Uh, Gewurztraminer. It's a little spite. It's a spicy white, good with Chinese food. Mm. But he's built his his entire empire off of that, and this is a kid that literally his parents came to America with nothing. Yeah, um, they came. His dad was supposed to have a construction job or anything, and when he got here, it was gone. So nice. It's just this weird dichotomy of how he was when he grew up, and now he's a millionaire, and what he does with that. So it's really good. Crush it's really good. Yeah. Um, quick side note: Da Costa has a blush rosé called uh, what? Go ahead. <laughs> Torres. I'm sorry. Torres Winery has a great blush called Da Costa. Mm-hmm. Um, it's great in the summertime with like pizza or mm-hmm. burgers because it really cuts the eight bucks a bottle, and it's mm-hmm. fantastic. Cigarette de Toro. 
Sangre de Toro is there. The only wine I've ever drank that I enjoyed. Mm-hmm. And Sangre de Toro is from the same winery. That's that's Torres Winery, and it's their um, Granacha, and it's amazing. It's oh, it's fantastic really cool. with barbecue. Oh yeah. Oh, you're not a fan of wine. I don't like wine. At yeah, all. I'm gonna drink the right Boone's Farmland. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Blackberry. That, that's we we ailing. We found a we found a really nice wine for four dollars a bottle at at Aldi's called Flirty Bird. It's not chilled. It's a sure. It's a Syrah. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh it's, my! It's I, I don't like I don't like red wines at all. Like I'm not a red. Then wine. you have not had the right red really? wine. Really, you don't like red? I said I don't like yeah. white. Anyway. And but this Syrah, it's amazing. Grand Cru Beaujolais, and we'll leave this. We'll leave this ahead. episode of Here's the Main on Wine behind. And move <laughs> we should start that because sure, we could, I, yeah. I had three wine classes my last semester at IUPUI. Those were books I was reading. Thank you. What'd you um, get your degree in? <laughs> computing and education. Okay, thank you. I thought it was a general studies. Department. And and my wife, my wife was so pissed off because she was pregnant with my daughter at the time, and the homework was. Take this bottle of wine that we talked about, pop it open, drink it, and write a review. And it was what? literally, it was one of the best classes I ever had. I need to sign up for that class. We should do, we should do this where we pop open a wine and we get foods, you know, beef, chicken, thing, other food, and we taste them with the wine. It was food and wine pairing, and it was amazing. It was a great class. No kidding. Wine with Scott. Wine with Scott. Boom. I'm in. There's podcast. So, um, I've also, what else did I just pick up? Maybe that was it. There was something else I just picked up, and I was kind of excited about reading. But we'll skip that. Johnny, what have you been reading? Nothing. Nothing? It's nothing at all. Johnny doesn't like the words? No, Johnny loves the words, but Johnny has to focus on art. Yes! It's very you hard know what, to Johnny? draw and read words. Johnny, I time. love I love that answer. Yeah. That's a great answer. So That's have you run out of audiobooks then? Because I know you uh, run out of audiobooks. Because no, I have crushes have, for you. Well, yeah, I got that downloaded, and everything's great. And I'll start that next week. At work, but I discovered new podcasts. Would we like to segue into podcasts? Johnny, have you been listening to any podcasts? I got, <laughs> I got two brand new ones that I can recommend. Uh, one of them literally stole my title for the podcast I wanted to run, Title and Concept, all in all, 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 one shot, where they oh. spend four or five hours playing a system and just kind of explore it, and then the next time they play a game they play something different man and so i have to give credit because i mean it's a great title because i was going to use it if i you know if, if i got around to it but what, what's the title of their podcast one shot really just you know one i like shot. i like i like ours better i like our title better yeah the title was yes different. we did did you um, listen to our meeting from last weekend oh okay <laughs> well i'll do that then <laughs> um anyway. title, would you like sure at least I'm not the you, one are you a pat to. benatar fan no. Hit me with your one shot, and we're gonna nice. do the whole. It's a whole. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And so. the cover art, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a female barbarian dressed in all like the the, the female the, armor, the deep no, the deep no. like furs and stuff with a giant hammer and just cracking the the title with it. Oh, that's that's awesome. awesome. See, smart. Hit me with your, and then one shot is underneath just, it. Yeah. Just ah. hitting the O in the one. Just all yeah. oh, that. Would be, yeah. Oh, that's genius. What? So, High five. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, um, the guy that runs it is a, um, he's really an improv up in Chicago. Cool. Um, it's Chicago based and they have, uh, they're on Peaches and Hot Sauce, uh, currently has their archives that they're moving over to their own page. Um, peaches and Hot Sauce? Yeah. Is that different than like Peaches and Cream or is that just, <clears throat> Peaches and Hot Sauce, I immediately, I'm, I'm hungry and went, huh. That sounds really good. It Go does ahead. sound really good. Doesn't well, like it I said, it's, it's the name of a the <clears throat> comedy group website. They have several podcasts that I have not yet gotten yeah. into. But I enjoy James D'Amato on one shot. And so, you know, I'm going to get into his other ones. But I love role-playing games. So check out One Shot is my recommendation. Well, a spicy what was the peach other one? barbecue glaze on a brisket. Oh, yeah. What, was the, other, what was the other podcast? <laughs> Um, no, I just, I had it, and I got distracted. <laughs> By the peachy By spice the peachy glaze spice on the yeah, brisket. Yeah, that's what distracted me. Um, oh. sounds good, that's all. Yeah, it's it's called Gamer's Table or something. I'm looking, trying, my app is taking forever to load. What but again, we can, va- we can vamp yeah. on brisket while he's, uh, no, no we're not going to do that. What kind of wine would go good with it? Sangre de Toro. Sangre de Toro, yeah. Goes well with pizza, too. Um, the DaCosta would be good, and so would um, 
You need to try, and then you too. Yeah, um, areas. The Beaujolais Grand Cruise. Gamers Table awesome. RPG podcast. They, again, talk, they play actual plays of games, and then they talk topics uh, related to gaming. Uh, they did one on um, character death and attachment to characters. It was kind of fun. Uh, they're, they're a pretty diverse group, um, so I think they're worth checking out. Cool. Uh, Jesse, you've been on some boxes? Nothing new. It's basically the same lineup as always. Um, Hearthstone. Um, the Angry Chicken is actually what it's called. It's a Hearthstone podcast. I listen to it a lot. Um, the other one is the the Vita Cast because I have a PlayStation Vita and I like Vita News. I didn't realize that Will uh, that Dills was on. The Angry yeah, Chicken. yeah, he is. Yeah, occasionally. He's also on the Instance, the World of Warcraft podcast mm. on, that's on the Frogpants Network. As a matter of fact, I think they started that podcast because people <coughs> were getting tired of him talking about Hearthstone on the World of Warcraft podcast. That might podcast. be why. It, it kind of was the impetus. Like, yeah. But, I mean, you might as well have a Hearthstone podcast. If exactly. You have a, if you have a World of Warcraft, yeah. Warcraft they, they go together. Yeah. I don't know. So, those two are yours? Yep. Shirley, have you been listening to any podcasts? I have. I'm going to play a Johnny on this one. I have not listened to any Podcast. Because you don't like Wait, to read? Because <laughs> I don't like I mean, that's, that's the question we asked Johnny, so we're just going to ask you. Know, you don't like words in your ear? I don't have time for words in my ear. Oh, you have time. We all have time. Scott, what have you been listening to? <clears throat> the standard um, manager tools, career tools, um, those are always good. They come out weekly or every now and then. Uh, it's just generally good stuff. If you're, if you're in a career where you have to work for someone else, if you have a boss, they're worth sticking in your ear. Uh, beyond that, I... I haven't had time to really listen to anything. No? Okay. That's what I've been choosing to listen to. I'm going to branch out, though. I've got a couple of others that potentially might do good once someone else at the table tells me what those are. So, uh... <laughs> uh I've been... I listened to Geek This This Week, <coughs> um, which I promptly shut off midway through their second episode. Geek Why? Oh, that's Geek not good. This. They, were, they requested that we listen to them. Their podcast is fine so far. I am enjoying the podcast. They had some ho- some guest hosts on, and those guest hosts had a lot to complain about the Lego movie. And about oh, halfway through, really? I fury anger shut off. I was like, I'm done. I can't do this what, anymore. What episode is this? Because i got a list. I can't yeah. see anybody can have a problem with it. I need to find out I what know, their problems right? are. Well, there, no, are there are some issues. There, there, are a of, Lego there are a couple of things that they were like, well, this is kind of weird. Like, um, everything is awesome. They're like, mm, it's kind of a slave song. And like, the more they talked about it, I'm like, yeah, but well, it is. Well, with the visuals the on the screen, point. is that not kind of... I mean, yeah. Could I get that, that but, but, made? but the, the movie uses it in a different way. Towards the end... It's the, so they had a point there, and I'm like, okay. But then they're like, yeah, it's just a, like, it wasn't very well done. Like, the what? animation was bad, and I'm like... No. What? No? The animation's why I liked it. Yeah. You, don't, you don't get I stop animation anymore. Both of those yeah. Points, but, yeah. The, the, and if it's not Tim Burton stop animation, I ain't the watching story, it. The story was too heavy handed with you're a bad father. Like, this is what they said. And I'm like, no, that's not the point. That is not, that is that's not all. the point at all. It's, it's sometimes you make a little bit of a choice to do a thing as a father, and then you have to remind yourself there might be a better way. That's all they're saying. They're not saying this guy's father was dead, or this this father was terrible. And, well, and, and the even guy if he lost his childhood, he he didn't choose to believe in that playful part of himself anymore. <clears throat> well, and even if oh he was a bad father, and he's going to use the craggle and get everything to we're just <laughs> we're going to be a bad dad. Gee, <clears throat> where's the redemption story of oh you know what he finally comes to see his son's point of view. They hug. And there's expansion there, and he goes, "You know what? I've been doing this, and I can be better as a dad." Let's play and, with our Legos together. And, That's and, a great story. And, and, then, no, and then the last, the last line. You know, now if I let you do this, your sister's got to be involved too. Which is yeah. he clearly is rede- he was redeemed in that moment because he's like, it's, it's yeah. everything. Which, by the way, Duplo has no place I in Legos. Lego movie. Kidding. Yeah. I'm well, kidding, I, I thought that was I that was pure Duplo. cheese to let the second Lego movie come out. Duplo oh, has yeah. no place in Lego. <laughs> Number two, Mega Blocks has no place in Lego. Whoa, Megablocks, you're right. Because they Whoa. don't. They Duplo don't... is Lego. It's yeah. baby Legos. Excuse me, and they have conversion Lego or kits that you can get that will allow you to connect Mega Blocks to Legos and everything right. else to Legos. Actually, um, looking at the stuff from Mega Blocks, not the same quality. No, what about oh those well, not at all. Blocks. No. no, but they have tanks and things. Yeah, they, right. Okay. So I'm like, so, mm, in. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, I've been listening to, to Geek This. Uh, they requested a, a review. So if you know anything out there... So you rage quit just on the topic? Just that topic. I couldn't do it anymore. Really? That's And nice. then I got distracted by um, 
some other podcasts that I really like, Top 5, and uh, Critical Hit that I'm way behind on again. And uh, well, People keep telling me I should listen to Critical Hit. They're at the well. That's critical where I'm Hit is nice. Critical Hit is good to pick okay. a news. Just you know what? Hey guys, you know hold on, hold on. It? Go ahead, Johnny. He was trying to say something, and you guys all talked over him. Sorry. They're, they're ending the the end of the Feywild season is coming, so you're. I'm like twenty five episodes behind. Now. Yeah, so but you're it's coming. So Good. Yeah, this one's been a little long. It was. So I, I had the wrong podcast. I lost interest in it about twenty podcasts into the critical hit. Critical hit. Oh. Yeah, it's just not my cup well, of tea. Well, <coughs> Scott, you may not enjoy it. It's fourth edition. I love critical hit. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, rage quit on the second episode just because of the topic. The, the, but the DM in, in that does a good job of making it about the story. Like I thought you couldn't do that in fourth ed. Go ahead. <laughs> You're the one that says that. I know. Anyway. He's not the only one. I guess you don't have the So I got distracted from a couple of things. <laughs> That's all the podcasts. So let's move on to gaming. Who's been doing any gaming? Oh, I've got a lot of gaming. Okay, so Did we have one? I'm going to start, and I'm going to tell you why. So I got to play Super Smash Brothers on the 3DS last night. Got to play what? Super Smash Brothers. Super Smash. Oh, really? I have it right here in my pocket. Oh, 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 so good! Such a good game. I played as Little Mac uh, for the Punch Out series. Uh, <clears throat> so much fun! It's a really good game. Um, it took everything good about the last Smash Brothers and added more characters. Like, there's a ton of characters in this one. Pac-Man. You play Pac-Man. You play Sonic again. Mega Man's on there. Oh, Little Mac. Love me some Mega Man. Dark, uh, Dark Ike. So not you know Ike from the. Uh... <coughs> Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> say it. Say it. Just say it out loud. Just say it out loud. Pit. Oh, Dark Pit. Pit from the. Uh... Icarus. Oh, Icarus. Kid Icarus. Oh, okay. okay. Or game. Right. You know, for back in the day. Right. Game and watches on there. Yeah, <coughs> Dark whoever you were saying. Dark Ike is the wrong guy. Ike, Ike is from another series all the time. say Ike's from South Park, isn't it? No, wrong Ike. Yes, it is. No, wrong Ike. <coughs> um, so I got to play that. I've been playing a lot of Civilization IV, because love me some Civilization IV. Doesn't love Civilization IV. Commies, that too. <laughs> Dirty, um, rotten, filthy commies. Yeah. That's it. Um, I think there's a little thing about it. I don't know anything you know, about Yeah, either. but if you'd play it once, you'd be like, ooh, mm-hmm. this is great, because you're not a dirty, rotten, filthy commie. C- Civilization 4 is a, a... Civilization as a series is a turn-based, world-conquering game. I'm too impatient for turn-based did, games. Did they fix the complete randomness uh, like by the time they got the 4? Because I remember in what 3, I could, have, randomness? I could have a camel come up against a tank, and it still has a chance of winning. There's still what? a chance. There's but still a chance. It's, it's is it a very camel low. with a bazooka? Everything is. Uh, you can see the numbers now. <laughs> okay. So that's helpful. Okay. And when you get ready to attack something, it tells you the, your percentage of winning. Right. So if I have a tank and it has thirty-two strength, and you have an archer and it has a six strength, or if I have an archer in a city and then that gives me bonuses and that right. gives plus me bonuses, it explains oh, okay. it's fifty percent. It tells you what your, what your two strengths are, the percentage of you winning, and you have a good idea. So are you looking forward to the new one coming out? The space six, one. Um, Honestly, no, because I really, it took me forever to get into four, because I played three for so long. Yeah. It took me forever to get into three, because I played two for so long. Yeah. Um, and then I bought them all as a collection at half price books. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, uh, no, honestly, I'll play four until I die. Um, it's, it's a good. really, really good game. It, it introduced religion in a non-insulting um, way. It's just Urgh. another mechanic, where I, I found it, I found uh, monotheism first, so I founded Judaism. And I can spread that with missionaries. If I spread it to another city, the, the, that city becomes Jewish, and then I can see inside your city just as though I were next to it with one of my units. That's yeah. it. So it gives you a little bit of strate- strategic value if you're the, 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 uh, the civilization that find, founds that religion. But that's about it. I mean, and you get, have some buildings that give you bonuses. Okay. Um, that's it. <clears throat> I, so there's no real, like, oh, well, this one's better. No, none of that just... Makes sense on the progression and that kind of stuff. So that's really good. Um, oh, uh, Johnny, what are you going to play? Nothing I have been drawing. <laughs> <laughs> I want. What, I, what's the name of your, your drawing application? Uh, I'm using Manga Studio EX. It's, uh, so you've been playing a lot of that recently. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> it's actually two, no, yeah, two versions back. They, they put it on sale for 30 bucks at Thanksgiving. It's a great app to draw with on, on the laptop, so. Nice. Yeah. Scott? <clears throat> I've been uh, beating the heck out of Wartoon online. 
Um, I'm finally to the point where I can start slapping other people down. I mean, I'm finally getting to the point where, and I got a, I got a new add-on. I finally got an Apollo Self that worked out. They're relatively rare, and it's letting me just stop people now. I'm very happy with it. Um, I'm playing a lot of Terraria on the Xbox, but I don't have as much time to Xbox um, because of one of the shows that I'm watching, and we'll get into that. We're doing shows later. We will. Um, and I blame Matt for that. Uh, but, because I'm on season two now. Um, so, I'm really kind of getting peeved because the boy is putting in a lot more time on Terraria than I am. So he's like, I've got frost boots that are rocket boots and ice boots and this combined and I can fly. And I'm like, ah. So I'm really kind of like, I want some rocket boots. But uh, other than the rocket boot, fantastic. Sid Meier's uh, Civilization Rev- uh Evolution on Xbox is really a good game. Uh, that was a Games with Gold purchase, and I'm very happy because it's Civ for the Xbox. I feel like it was a little dumbed down, but Ooh, yeah. it's not bad. But it's meant to tar. It's not meant at the Civ Four level. It's meant to rope in kids down to the ages of six and up. And those are, that's out on iPad too, because I bought yeah, that on I've iPad thinking, oh, this is gonna be great. Yeah. It's just a little on the easy side. It, it is. But that's fair. I so mean, then you crank up the level of difficulty, yeah. and it will get difficult quickly. Yeah. Um, so there's some of that. I was really happy with that one as well. So those are both the, both the primary games that I'm playing when I'm when I'm not working. Okay. Adventure Maximus? Um, and we haven't revisited yet. We need to yeah. do that. Oh, by the way, the appearance of the microphones at the house have spurned. Both of my children want to do a weekly podcast now, <laughs> and I'm going to rope them into the gaming thing as well. And we're going to get end up. So we're going to start doing it that way. So nice. we will be doing both of those shortly. Right Jesse, gaming. Uh, Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers is great. Uh, for the 3DS, I've also gotten Theater Rhythm Curtain Call, which is a rhythm game based on uh, Final Fantasy tunes. Rhythm games are kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. I don't know why, but I enjoy tapping along. Um, for the is that like, seriously, like a rhythm game is yeah, like you just tap, pa, rapa rapa, that type of yeah, rhythm. That's it, almost exactly. Yeah. Nice. Yep. I'm, I but, dig me some pa rapa rapa. You have monsters you fight, like in Final Fantasy, and as you hit, you attack them with your characters. Ah, so well, if you match if, the rhythm, then yeah. you're better at the combat. When you miss, they hit you, and you can die from misses. And oh, huh. interesting. That actually yep. sounds fun. I. I yeah. Like a good rhythm game, like yeah. Dance Dance Revolution was novel at the time. Now I'm bored with it. So yeah, when you, you collect when you items spin, yeah. when you can spin it in a new way. I get I can get back into it. So yep. that sounds fun. Um, for the Vita, I've recently picked up Minecraft. It just came up for the, the Vita. That's hard getting used to because I'm, I played on the computer. Everything you have to do it manually. Like you have to line up your three sticks to get your door or whatever you do. In this. You just open up a menu and it says, well, you could make this if you had these objects. It, it's oh, awkward. so you have to pick and yeah. go pick, make six of them? Yeah. And it just pulls it automatically? Yep. Yeah. Huh. It, it, it's a different way of doing it. That's it, interesting. It's a little better because I'm not constantly looking things up like I used to when I That's started. That's like it was on the Xbox. Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to be cross-saved with the PlayStation. Hmm. Um, That's interesting. I don't know if I... I don't know. Or maybe I'm a purist on Minecraft because it, crafting is one of the things that you have to work so hard on. If this wasn't in my pocket and I could do it at break, that's I would uh, not have that's true. given it an extra point. chance, probably. But yeah, it's working. Okay. Um, but yep. Yeah. Uh, Shirley. I haven't really played anything. Not X Wing. You haven't played X Wing. We already said that on the last question. Then I played X Wing. Well, this is a different. Are you month. still playing it? Yes, I'm still I, playing it. I talked it. about the two podcasts that I talked about last two months. Which X Wing? Okay, so computer game X Wing? X Wing Tie Fighter? No, no, X Wing on the. That was a good one. The one, one that the you guys played, X Wing Minis. No, we played. I house. played the Tie Fighters. Oh, we're not talking just. Are you on drugs? No, any kind of games. Oh, any kind of game? Oh, any kind of game? Okay. Yeah. Board games as well. That's why I thought. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you were just poking me. No. I just remember now. I did. I had oh, played a game okay. recently. I finally okay. got to play the trail in House on the Hill. Oh, did you? How'd it turn yeah. out? It was awesome. We pulled. The, we rolled the zombie scenario. Uh, oh yeah. And uh, I got. I had the weapon that could harm the the zombie lord, and um, another player got turned into the zombie lord. So I was the kid, and I made a foolhardy rush to try and just kill the zombie lord, and he smacked me down <laughs> real hard. And then uh, I got raised as a zombie. With the only weapon that can hurt the zombie lord? No, when you're a monster, you have to drop your stuff. Right. So um, it was there to be picked up. So the 
final the final player lured us around like the house turned into a loop luckily so she lured us around the loop and picked up the stuff and then made the final stand and beat the zombie lord i was nice. i was killed a second time like again <coughs> I was I rushed in. I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna get her," and she's like, "Nope." And yeah, so I died twice. It was fun. Nice. So I, I, I enjoyed I, it. The house Betrayal House on the Hill has a lot of positive chances to be a really good game. Occasionally, it just turns into a eh. because because of like, oh, we rolled up this scenario where all we have to do is get to the front door, and it just so happens that we're all at the front door. Yeah, we're already yeah. there. That that's ringing I mean, for you. I mean, it's just yeah. a, it, it like, has a lot of really interesting concepts and mechanics for it. For how it does all that stuff, but then sometimes. Yeah, yeah, there was one I had where at the basement there's a lake, and it was a flood in the bottom. In the basement floods first. Everybody was on the basement floor, and there was no ladder to get out of the basement yet. Oh yeah. So everybody came over. Yep. Yeah. So I played it once. Oh yeah. I yeah. had a great time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it is a blast. I, I can see how that would happen, but oh, I, I, I think, don't know about I the, the fifty times, times I've played it. It's the majority of the times you end up with a decent game. Yeah. Sometimes you just don't. Yeah. It, it happens occasionally. So. so. Um. So we hit gaming all around. No, oh, I'd like to uh, circle back with an opportunity sure. in the. Are game, you playing Marvel superheroes in the game arenas? <clears throat> yeah, oh, I probably should mention that. Go ahead. Um, no, the we I had a conversation with a group of other friends. Um, other friends. Other friends. What? Wow, that's gonna be expensive. That you know, hurts, right? Scott. I'm, that I'm just really saying, like, hurts. How much money does your wife have to buy all these friends for you? I know. You're making mint over here. I know. Seriously, <laughs> who made the, the 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 conversation that was started was, do you have an Xbox or a PS4? And the majority of the people at the table had it, were in the Xbox vein, and they said, "What would it take for you to come to buy a PS4?" And it boiled down, and the, the and it was put. The argument was put in this fashion, <clears throat> and I'll tell you what it said. If they released, if they said they were going to re-release or redo Final Fantasy VII for the PS4, I'd buy that stuff tonight. So what would it, what game from the from the PlayStation era, or if you have a PlayStation with the Xbox, would you want them to re-release that would get you to buy the other Castlevania console? Symphony of the Night? <clears throat> you, are you a fan of Castlevania? Yeah. Have you ever played Cassiope in the Night? No. Because it takes all the side scrolling, <clears throat> ramps it way up, makes all these areas you have to work to get to and find the right thing, but it's one freaking castle. It's huge. I played that heck out of that game. It was amazing. They re released it for DS. That was unfortunate because. <laughs> um, my brother had that for a while, and I wish I could keep playing that. But yeah, it was a really, really good game, and it was a PS2 game, right? Because they're all talking about Final Fantasy 63 or whatever the heck they're up to yeah. now. That I'm like, whoa, the new Final Fantasy's coming out. I was like, whatever, and they were like, well, who do you mean whatever? Final Fantasy's awesome. I'm like, no, Final Fantasy 7 was awesome, would, and then it kind of went downhill. I was so, so I, you know, the Final Fantasy 7 is on the PlayStation Vita. You could take it on the go. I, <laughs> um, honestly, if they were re-released uh, Final Fantasy XII, I might consider. Final Fantasy XII was totally different combat system. Everything Cause, changed. Because I want my so kids good. to play Final Fantasy VII. It yeah. was such a good game. Just, just go buy a PS2. Yeah. You can still buy them, and they work. Yeah. Replace my PS2 with a DVD player, and you can have it. Really? That's all my PS2 is anymore, is a DVD player upstairs. That's that's a thirty dollar. He could you could buy him a Blu-ray player for that matter for thirty well, bucks. We may have Johnny. I'm, you know I'm glad I'm wrong. I, I moved back in this particular conversation, Johnny, because I may have to hook you up there. Um. All right. So let's move on to apps. Uh, we'll start with Jess. Uh, we'll start with Scott. Scott, what app? You want me to tell you the same app that I should tell you every time that no, Trello is the greatest app time. of all time? Um, Trello's a good app. Uh, the most of the apps that I'm looking at, I just got into Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> just Welcome shut to your mouth. <laughs> yes, just. I guess I still got to give it a shot. I, I Twittered a little bit and then went... Yeah. You got to gotta get with the tweets, baby. Oh, my gosh. Um, Evernote's a great app. Um, Log Me In, their app is really expensive, but if you have a computer at home that you want to access on the go, Log Me In's a great app. What? Yeah, I can I can access my laptop and do stuff on it. Like I was at work one day and they said we're gonna have a new position open up here, but we need your resume. And like you don't keep your resume at work because people get you know snotty about like are you looking for a job? So I got yeah. on my laptop, emailed oh, me my own resume maybe from I home. Delete it off of my work computer. Um, <laughs> yeah, Park, Park Mobile is a great app. 
Park Mobile is a great app. Um, if you live in a town where you can use Park Mobile, you should really go and, out and get and that. And exceptionally accurate. Yes. I've been very impressed by how accurate it has been in Indianapolis. Oh, yeah. Are you well, guys familiar with Park Mobile? I'm, I'm aware of it. I've not actually used it. But I would. I mean, accuracy is, is like the keystone of that app. Like, right. I mean, if it's not I, if accurate. it was like, oh, well, in the last hour it was open. It's like in the last five minutes somebody just left. You're good to go. Yeah. Parker's like that. Yeah. So that's... If you go park places, that's really about because it saves you having to get out and wander down to that stupid little obelisk of dumb. Because I can never. They're like step one: stand on your left foot. Step two: um, you. I don't know what that step was. <laughs> step three: insert money. Like, wait, what was step two? Is it important? Well, and then when you put money in it, it goes, well, something went wrong with step two. So here's your money back. Try it again. It's like what? Yeah, it's. We said it robbed you. Well, <laughs> that's if you're lucky, you get your money back. If not, they're like, "Well, we took your money and you paid for somebody else's parking." Oops. Park Mobile, good app. All right, yeah. I'm done with the apps. Okay, Jesse. Um, I finally bought into Spotify. <gasps> okay. I, I I like Spotify. Nice. It's that's right. It's uh. It's a lot better than I thought it would be. Oh yeah, it's okay. worth ten dollars. Did, did, did you did you find the audiobooks? No, I'm still going through the musicals that I like. And <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, there are Lovecraft books on there. Oh, really? Spotify yeah. is the, I hit the button, it listens to the music, it tells me what it is. Is that one? No. No, that's Shazam. That's okay. Shazam. Spotify is, uh, you know, Pandora. Yeah. So Pandora, you choose, I like Weird Al, and it gives you all these artists that are like Weird Al. Right. Spotify, you go, I like Weird Al. It's like, which which songs of which albums do you want to listen to? You can just add those to a playlist. Yeah, I got his new CD. How much do you pay? $10 a month. $10. Yeah, no, that's all right. I can get my own music. And See, I, can, I, can, I, I have other sources for music. music. I, I, I have the other sources and then laziness, and laziness just kind of went out on me. I, me too. I understand <laughs> what you're saying about the other sources. And while I don't prescribe to those sources, and I don't think that those are necessarily the best sources. They are. Because as a, as a content creator, I would love if people would pay for myself. Right. No, 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 no. But you're, I think you fail to understand what I'm talking about. Okay? When I got on the Linkin Park kick, uh-huh. okay, one person shared a song with me and said, here, you just listen to this song. And I'm like, ooh, that's really, really good. So I went back to my sources and went, yeah, you know, give me more songs from this person. And I and I went, oh, wow, this is so good. I did not start, okay, by the way, that original source way back in the day was called Napster. Okay, I love yeah. Napster. Um, I originally went on Napster and got a bunch of Linkin Park stuff for free and then went, oh, my God, this is so good. I have to go buy the album. Sure. I did, I have bought more music, bought Mm-hmm. More music since using those other sources yeah. than I did previously because I'd just borrow friends' stuff and hang on to it or record it or do whatever. Like, the other sources, like Ryan Sheridan, his song Jigsaw, I went out and bought his album. The rest of the album is basically garbage, yeah. but that song is fantastic and I'm glad I own it. I oh, very yeah. rarely buy music, but if I do, it's going to be something amazing. Like, I bought um, this whole album of old 8-bit video game themes done in rock music. Nice. Which is just fantastic. The Castlevania <clears throat> 2 theme is amazing. Nice. So uh, you may of... like, sorry, you may like the unpaid version of Spotify because you said you just bought that album and the rest of the music was crap except for that one song. Um, the unpaid version of Spotify allows you to look up albums and then you can listen to the album before you go buy it. Huh. That's yeah. That's the other thing. See, because so, my take is, is if I'm going to obtain music from other sources, I'm darn well rather willing to put my money where my mouth is. Yeah. Not everyone is, in all fairness. I mean, yeah. I'm with you on that. But if I'm going to listen to something all the time, like I was like, oh, I'm on a Weird Al kick, so I'm just going to add all all of his albums. Every they're all on, single on Spotify one of them to one playlist. They just go random, shuffle. Yeah. yeah, and they have some really um, hard to find stuff on there. It's like I, I like Free for Madness the musical. It's hard to find the songs from that anywhere. Spotify's got the whole album. The, the well, thing. but when, when you say the whole album, like with Linkin Park, they have hidden tracks and they have DMR only. Like, you can only get them on the CD. See, that might not be on there, yeah. Are they on there? That I don't, I don't know about. I don't know. The other thing with Spotify is that um, you can either download them to your device or not. So as long as you have a good cell connection, you don't have to worry about using wasting space on your device. Hmm. So I mean, understandable. Yeah, so, like on long car trips, hopefully not on I eighty because nobody covers I eighty between Iowa and anywhere. Really? Well, that Verizon does. No, they don't. Really? I actually went and looked. Is that in like Montana? Yeah, uh, it goes through um, Nebraska, 
into Wyoming and then into Utah. Oh, nice. So there's nothing. Driven that a lot, have we? Uh, just once. <laughs> But you were peeved well, because was, you couldn't get your was, Pandora or whatever. We're in, we're in Wyoming, and I'm like, oh, there goes the exit. I really kind of need to pee. Where's the next? And we have this app. Hey, we're still on apps. Road Ninja. Have you ever used Road Ninja? No, I haven't. It's like, here's the exits coming up. This is the, what's at those exits. The next exit with any kind of thing, anything, 60 miles. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. We couldn't get Road Ninja to work because there was not enough connection. Ooh. So, so did you pull over and do your business on the side of the road? No, we went to the rest stop that said, beware of rattlesnakes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> We're pulling up and it says, please beware of rattlesnakes. And I went, mm. I'm glad it's light out. Because if it was dark, we would be getting back in the car. <laughs> I'm not doing this. No, thank you. So you nice. just rolled out the window. And like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's Wyoming. It's going to be rattlesnakes. Hook, you just hook your belt to the that. little thing, to the little notch. Yeah, your belt loop on the little yeah. notch in the back where you hang yeah. coats and stuff. And pray. Don't Just slow down. I'm with you. Oh, yeah, but uh, Road Ninja is really good, and Spotify is good for that same thing. When you're like we're driving around town, and once <coughs> once it connects that first time, it seems like it keeps going. Like it doesn't have a problem with grabbing the next song mm-hmm. as long as it connects that first time. That first time might take thirty seconds for it to grab a song from the cloud. I guess it would be the proper yeah. appropriate term. But once word, it yeah. once it grabs it. It just keeps it going. So it's like it knows it's going to shuffle. It already knows the next song it's going to shuffle to. It already starts. So it buffers swings that. Swings that into the buffer. Nice. So I like that. Um, so Jesse, we were on apps with you, right? Yes. So uh, uh, Scott, we already did you. Surely apps. 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 You I do have. Spotify? I have lots of apps. Spotify. You like Spotify? Spotify is good. Spotify is wonderful. Spotify. Anything else? And then so I have been on my Pinterest app, um, app a lot. Um, what we, is Pinterest? Because I keep hearing about Pinterest. And okay, Pinterest is this amazing amalgamation of everything that people like so it's anywhere. Like it's no, um, it's actual. What you do is you get onto Pinterest um, when you sign up. Um, you create a board, and on that board, it's like it's like going to Marsh and looking at a bulletin board that has all the advertising on it. Imagine you have so, thousands of magazines in front of you and a bulletin board, and you're like. I like this car ad. Rip bulletin board. Bulletin board. That's what Pinterest is. You pin it. What That's what can you so pin? Anything, anything you find. That sounds bizarre. Most websites let you pin them if they're yeah. smart. They'll have do, a do, little do Pinterest we? pin. Ours isn't set up that way. I don't think. What? I don't think I turned that one on. That'd be amazing. But um, I so love. So get on that. <laughs> I love homeopathy. Home, home, homeopathy. Homeopathy. I love that. Yeah. I love. Um, outdoor living and anything that has to do with the outdoors so what I usually do is I go and look for homeopathic um, remedies and um, things that have to do with Isn't camping. Isn't that like where your blood doesn't congeal and you just like no, bleed out? No, no, that's, that's hemophilia. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, homeopathy Home- is rub some garlic on it you'll feel better. Yeah. Oh, take, okay. like, take some willow bark instead of aspirin. Yeah, things like that. No, well, I mean it's raspberry more tea. Than ladies, well, ladies, just raspberry quick note, tea. Raspberry tea. Oh, Moving on. Yep. And while the during your moon time, while the while the, the the homeopathy stuff, you're like, eh, eh, okay, whatever, homeopathy. That there's a few things. I pinned I pinned some Nerf guns and yeah. some uh, uh, dystopic rising uh, armor ideas. Like, can you can you pin any, part of an article or is it whatever the page know, is? Honestly, um, it's it's like at the if people have their stuff set up right, you can either pin the page. Because it'll be at their top bar where the search is, or each individual section of their page. Like if they wrote, blogged an article or something like that, you can okay. do so that. It's... Or you can copy and paste part of it and then create your own pen. Hmm. Is the point of this to remember stuff for yourself or to show other people what you like? Yes. Both. Both. Okay. Yeah, see, because I'm, I'm, big on, I'm big on Evernote. That's a brain dump. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I found this out on the interweb, and I want to save it for later. Yeah. Evernote, 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 Evernote. And the thing is, there is a ton of crafty stuff on Pinterest, but <laughs> any category that you can think of is is on Pinterest. I love Pinterest fails. I love that. You never, okay. you never heard of Pinterest fails? No. So somebody puts up this craft that they've made, mm-hmm. and it's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they so you see how it's done and everything. Mm-hmm. Somebody goes and tries it. And it fails. <laughs> like yeah, like okay, like, you know like a what? cupcake with with that. I forget what that icing is called. It like hardens. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, like the faucet. So, that's it. Somebody's like, I'm gonna do okay. this, 
And then they, they just have a mess yeah. on the top. I didn't know that that was a thing because that happened to me last weekend. Yeah. I but. found this awesome Pinterest craft. It was a mason jar, and then you take this stuff called Mod Podge, which is, which is a type oh, yeah. of glue, and then you put the leaves that you've saved. Like, yeah. Su- my sister and I um, save leaves for two weeks. We tried to paste them to these jars exactly like the Pinterest mm. article said and yeah no. Yeah, no. You should take a picture it, of it and, and pin that. Yeah. No, I have the pictures of it. Yeah. I didn't know it was a thing. I'm pinning it yeah. today. Yeah. <laughs> Pinterest failed. Pinterest, Pinterest, failed. Failed. Pinterest, failed. Pinterest failed. I mean I, I don't want to laugh at people but I love yeah. to see like oh, I'm I like, tried this and it didn't work. <laughs> all of my all of my leaves are like kind of halfway off the jar. Anyway yeah. so there's Pinterest. I have been um, not really playing any games. There's my Spotify. Um, I really like... Um, You're not a Starfleet Commander anymore? Yes, I am, but I haven't been playing it. I really like Google Drives. They divided it into two things, so now I have they Google Sheets. They divided it into more than two things. Okay, well, I have Google Sheets, and I oh. like it. I hate that I have to go to two different apps, so... Yeah. All right, so... Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John, apps... I got nothing new. I'm still playing Monster Rising. See, I can have this time. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, so I am using MailChimp, since MailChimp is our, um, what tracks That's our great. newsletters. That's great. Your time is up. Really? <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> I'm using MailChimp. Uh, I've also been using, we use Chimpadidoo, which is also part of MailChimp. Do I need to separate you two? <laughs> Where are you separated? Jesse's between us. One of you can go stand on the hall. Okay. Uh, so, MailChimp's been really good. It's really great to get that information as uh, we get information on who's opening and what they're clicking on so I can improve our newsletters. I've been really impressed by MailChimp. Oh, you can track who opens them? Yeah. Okay, so I need to start opening oh, my newsletters. Oh, did you Turkey open one? No, no, we're still in the United States for our, our newsletter opens. I thought you said something no. somewhere else opened. No. Um, but we would like to thank Brian Warwick, who we... we Wyrick, Wyrick, who we really like. Thank you for opening so many times. Nice. He's a, uh, I don't know, whatever. If you open our newsletters, we might read your name too. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for supporting us. Um, what else am I using? Oh, I just downloaded a tower defense called Tower Defense. I'm a sucker for tower defense games. I'm a huge sucker really? for tower so defense that, That's games. a creative name. Yeah. Um, wow. You know what? Is that I mean, the original tower defense? I don't know. I don't care. Hold on. You're talking about more than one app? No. <laughs> <laughs> You talked about four prior to that week. <laughs> so our executive producer has hand signals. That was an amazing one. Go ahead. So uh, I'm when I had back when I had an Android phone and you know the dark times. Um, I found a tower defense game ever also called Tower Defense. I don't remember who made it, but I love that game. It was the only app I purchased. From tower Defense phone. Incorporated. It's the Which only. Is- f- it's the only app I purchased for my Android phone. Only one. So that one I played like crazy. And then this one is only on my, or is available on iPad and iPhone, but I just put it on my iPad so I don't get distracted by it too much because I know I will. I'm a sucker for Tower Defense games. Love Tower Defense games. Yeah. Well, you know, once you played the first 47 levels of Tower Defense, you've kind of played it all. Yeah, you could say the same thing about Candy Crush, but that's. I've never played Candy Crush, nor do I ever wish to. <laughs> Uh, all right, we'll start with books. Or I'm sorry, books. No, we've done books, movies, and TV. Scott, would you like to give us a rundown quickly of a couple, not all, of the things you've been watching? Fringe episode one, two, three, four, five, six, so eighteen, fringe. nineteen, twenty. Season so, one done. So fringe. Um, fringe, fantastic. I was a little disappointed at the end of season one, um, <laughs> because. It didn't have that zing. No, no, it had a great zing. It was amazing zing. I was right there until oh. I heard the voice of William Bell and went, really? What? That was really? the most exciting part. Are you kidding they me? They couldn't have picked a different act. Like, no. Oh okay, my gosh. the guy that plays Mr. Jones, is he on the same caliber as the guy that plays Mr. Bell? No, but um, I loved Mr. Jones. Loved him yeah, to death. Yeah, but I, I loved William him and lost that. his really? I can tell you this, but uh, Leonard Nimoy is not anywhere near... I wasn't going to say the level. name because of the spoilers. Yeah. Good He's job. only in seven episodes. And one of them... You only now you're ruining for me! <laughs> <laughs> 
And one of them oh my god! Just hear his voice. Oh my god! Okay, so now that Matt has ruined season two of Fringe for me, great. No, that's, uh, three and four. Sorry. Great. Wonderful. I'm uh, glad so that like was ruined. Through season two, can you tell um, the I'm, I'm yeah. two episodes. I'm into the second episode of season two because it was two o'clock in the morning and I knew I had to be up today. <laughs> um, so, so you know the movie's online and you're just you, you shouldn't watch it, but you're going to go ahead and watch it and write a dissertation. Just what, like your wife. movie? I don't know, whatever movie she was on. Oh, was she was going to do the the, <laughs> Philip, or the Philip K. Dick. Yeah. Oh, she, she, read, yeah. she read the book that Blade, Blade Runner was was, yeah. was based after, and she was like, wait, they left out a whole bunch of stuff, and brrr, and she went off on a thing. Oh. Um, so have you noticed article, the pacing? Yeah. Is, go ahead. Is that an article? <laughs> we should um, have that. No, I said, do you want to write a review or compare and contrast? And she went... Oh, that's a PhD level. Takes six months to a year and a half to write that. I posted with eight it. different works. Still posted. We posted. That was my point. She's like, ah, I don't know if I want to get that depth. And I went, okay, whatever. It's fine. She can, re- she can wow. roll it back. Okay. That was my thought. Um, I, I'm trying to encourage her to do that. In French, have you already noticed the difference in like pacing and overarching story? Between I really two? liked the first season. I'm not saying I it was really liked it. I'm not saying it was bad. It just it wasn't great. It was good. Oh, I really I thought I would I would borderline say it was great. Well, then you're either going to absolutely love the rest of it or hate it. Okay. Cuz it shifts. It, it doesn't shift in a bad way though. They they define things better and they have a better they have a better grasp on what they're doing, I think. That's my okay. opinion. Okay. Well, and I'll tell you what, in the last 4 or 5 seasons of episode 1 or of season 1, I really started catching it in the background. The observer yeah, wanders through here, wanders through there, looks like I'm like, whoa, oh, that's yeah. it. And I start, I'm, I've seen him all the time. So, oh, in, in episode so. one, did they find the albino kid? Or in season one, they found the albino kid? Yes. Did you know who, did you see who he went to live with? Looked like a bunch of observers, didn't it? Could have been. They have but there were a bunch of them, so I was like, yeah, they, nah, they, they can't touched be that on guy. that again. Huh. So they have, I don't know what that was. But mm-hmm. that is just rife with more story potential. Mm-hmm. Right. Which so, really and, and I like the fact, um, they stole my idea. The idea that I pitched for the Cthulhu game. Um, for our Cthulhu game. Oh. With the two tables. And, the oh, thing. and yeah. you're like, oh, you mean Fringe? And I was like, what? And there, I, I, there's a lot of potential and a lot of story. Um, I want to see where else they go with it. I've already started picking out an interesting storyline that would that is sort of in their vein, but a little different. And it's interesting because I want to see what direction they're going from the standpoint of I've already had a couple of moments towards the end of season one and the start of season two where I've went, you know, I'd have done that differently. I'd have gone this direction instead. Well, how do you feel about the actor for Walter? Isn't he just Oh, my God. God he's amazing. Oh, Joshua, Joshua Jackson is really good, isn't he? Um, I don't know who. Uh, he plays Peter. He plays Peter? Okay. Because I keep seeing that name and I keep what? chuckling every time that <laughs> every I see time it. Because I'm like, Matt oh, says this is really, really good. And then it keeps saying Joshua Jackson and I go, <laughs> Tee! Joshua, Joshua Jackson from Dawson's, Dawson's Creek. Creek. Okay, I, I didn't realize Oh, is that Dawson's Creek? Creek? I didn't. I never watched that. I Dawson's thought Creek. his name was something else. No, um, Anna Torf is really good as Olivia. Just Fantastic. I like oh, Walter better than Olivia. Oh, oh that's fair. Yeah. And wait. they introduced this new FBI lady uh, in season two. Who? The, the lady that was investigating when Olivia in oh, the yeah. first episode. Okay. Okay. And now she's still on it. They've introduced her. She's like, hey, welcome to Fringe. And now I think, are they going to add her as a regular character? I hope so. Because I found Olivia a little too angsty. Yeah. A little too... She gets better. It's just so... Mm. Okay. You know? I'm, but Keep watching. I, I hang out on it for Walter. Um, and... Uh, I have found one problem okay. with the fringe verse. Okay. Does no one in the entire universe ever look up? No. I mean, seriously. People in normal life don't honestly look up. Oh my people. goodness. I'm, okay. Honestly, that, like, you'll find people just don't look up. Because that, that's like horror movie cheesy. Like, you're know, walking through the forest looking for the creature. Do you never it look up? It couldn't possibly have climbed the tree. Right, it couldn't have possibly climbed the tree. You're going through the underground when there's the change facey guy, and there's obviously a set of pipes that run along every tunnel, area above the pipes, and then an area above that. You wouldn't dent left, right, up, left, no. right, down, left, right, up, left, right. Um, well, the, the, in season four, there was a, there was a moment in the episode where Sherilyn and I both screamed because it scared us that bad. 
Nice. So, I mean, there's, there, it's really good. Anything else you've been watching? No. Watch Eureka? Good series. Uh, okay. Eureka? I like that. I'm trying Eureka. to still get through Star Trek Next Gen with the kids. Yeah. Uh, the kids are watching Eureka with us. Um, yeah. That's really good. The kids and the wife started Evermore last night. A new Disney, Friday Nights on Disney. It's, I think, Once Upon a Time, mm -hmm. only for the tween crowd. Oh, that's Cause awesome. Because it was all about witches and bubbling cauldrons and we must protect the coven. So there's like this, there's this whole layer in and the kids started getting a little, and then they pulled it right back. And it was, so it's supposedly tweens and moms or whatever can watch it, but they were riveted. And I just heard it. I was working on my podcast stuff. Um, out of the corner of my ear, I kept hearing this. <laughs> and hearing it, and the kids were loving it, and the wife was like, so I'm going to ask them how it was. I don't think I'm going to start watching, but it's one of those where it was like, it was received very well in our household. Right on. Uh, John, you been watching anything? Nope, just drawn? Uh, <laughs> uh, television movies is a little easier, because uh, I can turn it on and not look at it. You know, as long as it's not foreign or silent. So you haven't watched anything from the Criterion Club. <laughs> Ding. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, no, I re, re I rewatched an anime series, Gurren Lagann. Um, it's really awesome. Uh, it's giant fighting robots, but with like a, with a, with an actual story behind it, and uh, it's not drama. It's all it's very fantasy. They go from a man sized robot to galaxy sized robot, and it's kind of crazy and out there. But I love the story. Um, and then, of course, I'm into the superhero television shows. Thursdays, while my child was at school, which she's not these last these two weeks, um, Thursdays are my favorite day because I can turn on Hulu and watch Gotham, Agents, Arrow, and Flash. Nice. It's just, that's, that's a great lineup. Well, I'm glad, there enough, I'm glad there are enough superhero shows on that you can now start to... Compare and contrast. Well, like, oh, none yeah. of those were animated, which I don't mean that no. in a bad way, but none of those are animated. So yeah, you're all live action. You're not even having to touch any of that. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, Jesse, you've been watching anything? Yes. I've been watching Doctor Who with the family, and it's starting to get a little convoluted. And which Doctor are you on? I think I'm getting burned out on it. Uh, Matt Smith and Amy Pond. So you made it through all the way up to him? Yes. Okay, good. I've been all the way through it. I'm enjoying it. I like the, the whole, almost every episode now deals with paradoxes and stuff like that and all this yeah, weird stuff. But the family's starting to go, I just want the funny story the, that they're the, working with. That season gets a little convoluted. Oh, right? more than a little. Leading up to the the, 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 the spaceman. Yeah. Yeah. Death of the Doctor. Yeah. Like... I, I don't blame him at all. No, that one gets it, it's, little... does it get better after this? Because I know I'm stuck with him for like three seasons. But... Um, where are you? Um, well, I just found out that what's her face is what's her face's daughter. Okay, okay. And, okay. Well, I was trying to not spoil for okay. people who haven't. <laughs> um, what's your face is what's your face's daughter. The end yes. of this season, um, you're going to have to un between now and the end of this season that you're on, you're going to have to untangle a rat's nest of yarn. To figure out what the heck is going on. But at the very last two episodes, you get sort of a, oh, okay, aha. The beginning of the next season, they get rid of that ball of yarn and go back in time to 1969, and it's good. And give you a whole new bar ball of yarn. You just don't realize it's tangled yet. Well, yes. It just seems I like mean, there's been, when it first restarted, before, I think there was like a two or three year time gap, wasn't there, between Matt Smith and. No. Um, what's his face? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Okay. David Tennant. But, uh, yeah, I don't know how I forgot David Tennant's name. But anyway, though, it's it's like there's the rift, and then there's the there's major overarching plots mm -hmm. through every single episode. And then it does it does Tennant's only the, he really had the bad wolf on once during his reign. They, they did break the that theme of Doctor Who where it's a this happened. Okay, now we're gonna go on. Yeah. This happened. It yeah. quit being a monster of the week and started becoming these more overarching stories. That's what some people want. And yeah. you have to take each season as its own chapter book type thing. Yeah. Because they encapsulate. They do several little of these things happen, and we can toss them. But there's almost always an over the entire season. And then like, also, remember that thing we mentioned in the first to see in the first episode of this season? Ah, uh -huh, now yeah. you get it. Yeah, huh? they've done Bad Wolf. Like, yeah. I mean, diff a different thing, but they did the Bad Wolf thing in every yeah. well, season. And they also seem to be killing Rory off. A lot, and I, I can understand that the you'll get Rory is one of our favorite. Characters. I know, I, I do. I like you him will, a lot. I do. I, I already do. And but, it only gets better. Have, you, okay. have you, you have you gone through the Pandorica yet? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it it was, only gets better because Rory is the best companion. 
Yeah, he is. He is. Hands down. Just perfect. Um, I didn't know you felt that way. Oh, yeah. The, the, yeah, there was there was an episode, and I don't remember what was going on, but they all, Matt Smith and Rory and Amy go somewhere, and Rory and Amy just pull out weapons, and they're like, okay, let's go, let's do this. And I'm like, oh, that's nice, Amy is not the, oh, I don't know what to do, companion anymore, but Rory is freaking trained in combat. Yeah. yeah. So we're set. <laughs> like, I was for like, centuries. well, which is, <laughs> for <laughs> centuries, yeah, exactly, yeah. for hundreds and hundreds of years. He's literally. older than a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. They, they've said he's been around for 900 or something. He's 900 yeah. uh, years well, old. But no, no, the no. doctor then says, I'm X number of years old, so he's got like a couple decades on Rory. And uh, that was true. when it was David Tennant, and he said, I'm 908. Yeah. You look this good when you're nine. And that was before he met Rory. True. Didn't. Yeah. Um, so well, then Matt Smith does it too. When he, he does comes, later. Yeah. 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 Um, well, and actually, the, the space man. He says it. He explains his yeah. age a couple of times. Right. So I've also been watching Gotham. I, oh, 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 before we leave Doctor Who, do you love it, just for half a second? Do you love it when the when the guard comes in and go at the at the prison and goes, "Sir, she's packing again." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Stuff. Uh, that's, that's good. Stuff. You've been watching Gotham. I've been watching Gotham. I'm enjoying it. I like it far better than I ever thought I would. So I thought it would just be another police procedural, and I can't stand those. I can nitpick it to death, but that doesn't necessarily make it a bad movie, a bad series. Death. It, the it, death. It, it has oh, issues. The Wayne's yeah, story. The, the whole thing. I, personally, I feel like the series is going too fast. I don't know how they're going to do a season two with Wayne doing what he's doing. Because it's not supposed to be about Bruce uh, Wayne. It's supposed to always be about Gordon. Huh. And it's kind of yeah. like they're building him up I too quickly. I thought it was supposed to be about the city. Because you know it's named... Gotham. Yeah, it's just I think, a clever uh, ruse. I, well, I watched. I watched the first episode. I really enjoyed it. Um, surely, we went to rewatch it. And I wasn't feeling well that night, and I dozed off. I don't think Shirley it's... cared for it as much. Okay. I just. Um, I'm not. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge DC fanboy, though, and <clears throat> I, I, like... I like the little catches and things that they're throwing. But it's just. Have you seen the Flash yet? Then. I'm not a huge Flash fan. You'll like this Flash because they, they throw in a bunch of other stuff too. And, yeah, the. the he meets two scientist buddies. One of them, is, or and two, one of them's a villain, and the other one, oh crap, now I forget what his story was. He like every character you meet in that story is somebody. Um, the girl is was dating half of Firestorm, and he oh, okay. disappeared during the accident. So you know, and it's, it's good stuff. That's what are you saying, isn't it? Shirley? Yes. What are you saying about? I just think. <clears throat> like the scene with the initial scene with Jada Pinkett Smith just kind of reminded me. Well, the initial scene where Gordon talks down that guy, this insane guy that want, just wants his pills. And then um, the initial scene with Jada Pinkett Smith, it aligned with too much of what's going on in the media today with the police officers. Oh, and right. I was just like, that's a bunch of, you know, Gordon is actually. A caring person that's trying to like, okay, you don't have to approach it this way, but they still beat the crap out of that guy in the middle of a yeah. police station. Well, and the, I was the like, Gotham I'm police, done. The Gotham police are a horrible group of people. Yeah. They, they even are in Bruce Wayne's time. It's yeah. Gordon keeping him in check. And I, I get what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, and that kind of did it in for me. So well, I don't care and, for it. And Jada Pinkett Smith's character is a little overacted and a little too cartoony at times. Yeah, I think the last couple of episodes have been pulled back, okay. but you know that character is only sitting around until uh, Penguin becomes or a someone, character. Or someone else. No, um, penguins eat fish. It's it's coming. Like, well, yeah. the thing is, I like I knew that that's who that was because didn't they call him Penguin or something? Yeah, they call him the there? Penguin. Yeah. He hates it. And he's gonna... I'm like very intrigued in like how he be, because he's just an over the top grotesquely violent person. I mean, he, he starts taking a major role early on in the series. I, I, I did like the actors. The guy they have playing Harvey Bullock is really good. I really like him from yeah. everything he's done. I wish they hadn't made him as corrupt as he is because I always liked the idea of Bullock being believed to be corrupt but then not actually ever being yeah. corrupt yeah. or as you know like he just plays that way to yeah, get to get in and, yeah. but it, it's easy to tell he's going to be a redemption arc though he will yeah. be he will have a redemption oh. arc coming but. surely what are you been watching we're going to move on somewhere. um 
Uh, I've just been, I finished uh, season three of Once Upon a Time, and now I'm on season four, so I'm caught up. But I, like, slammed season three. two and three, yeah. and, like, just watched them this past two weeks, so. What is Once Upon a Time about? I mean, I know it deals with Disney stuff, but. Yeah. Not, well, not Disney, just it's, fairy tales. It's, it's fairy- every single fairy tale you can think of, because. What is the fairy tale that was in there that doesn't have anything to do with Disney? Oh my gosh. Wizard Wait, of Wizard of Oz isn't it Disney? <coughs> right. Uh, but it's all it the is, but... it's all the Little Red Riding Hood, Hansel and Gretel, Rapunzel, yeah. um, Maleficent, the Good Witch, the Bad Witch, yeah. um is it a Rumpelstiltskin. Place? I mean all of the Every... fairy tales. Okay. The, the basic yeah. idea is that the the evil witch from Snow White cast a curse or with some help cast a curse there's a whole story there Mm -hmm. that brought everyone into modern times in a town called Storybrooke Snow White and Prince Charming had a baby that baby had a baby because it's been that long but no one in Storybrooke has aged none of them know that they're fairy tale characters none of them know any of that and at the end of the first season that curse was broken Mm -hmm. by the Snow White Snow White's child coming back to save and she's one of the main characters she's grown probably mid 20s it's been 18 uh, years this, she's only 18 no, no. It's, oh. so this is borrowed heavily from the fabled uh, it, no so it's not it? borrowed at all it's not it's it's it's, so it's, it's the like the fabled story but it's not fabled it's, a, it's, it's an adaptation yeah. this is this is this <laughs> is to fable like Batman is to Moon Knight oh so it's two very similar concepts just done in different ways. Okay. See? That worked. Yeah. Right on. There you go. Um, and it's not like a police procedural or anything, is it? No. Uh, no. no. I, I tried to get into Grimm. Someone said, watch Grimm. You like these kind of stories. Story like, more fable. Yeah. yeah. No. And the thing is, like, the connections that are made between certain characters, like the evil queen and who she actually is in the past... It's it just some of it just blows your mind. You're just like, what? How did they even make that connection? Because have you ever seen the um, the Brave analogy of who the the lead girl in Brave actually is in the whole Pixar? Is it no, Pixar yeah, universe yeah, or whatever? Uh-huh. yeah. I've, I've read that. That's conspiracy. what Once Upon a Time is. Okay. You're like that person is who at what time during the whole Once Upon a Time is a little <laughs> less convoluted because that, well, that that Pixar write up was a little like. All right, so you took this one tiny little smidgen of thing and made it a huge Into this through line. Cool story. But yeah, but, yeah. Um, I'd like to read that though. I haven't read the her. You've not read that one. The her brave part of it. I don't oh know. yeah, mm-hmm. it, the old witch and brave. Oh, the witch and cottage. Witch. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. Is, I thought you meant the, the main witch character, boo, right? Right. The, yeah. Okay. So, anyway. um, I just last night watched something called I Know That Voice. It was about uh, voice acting. It's really good. Really? Oh yeah. I want to. I want to see that. It's then. on Netflix. Alrighty. Um, and then uh, is our friend. Batman the Animated Series, the first collection, is on Amazon Prime. Uh-huh. Oh, so good. It holds up. There uh-huh. are some points where I'm like, wow, that's a little cheesy. But it really holds up. The animation is so good, so solid. Um, I really enjoyed that. I've been kind of watching my way through Sopranos, but I'm going a little slower on that. Um, it's a little rough. Season three. I think, so I think that's about when I stopped watching it. I, it's not bad. I'm, no, I'm, I'm no, saying, by no I'm means. Saying but the it's, writing is fine. Yeah. What's going on, like, these are bad people doing bad things, and that's starting to really yeah. drain me from the series. It's the same thing with Breaking Bad. Like, that one I watched too many in a row, and it was terrible, so I, I'm, I, need, to back, I need to back off that, too. So um, Have you finished it yet? No. Yeah. I have to go scroll on the that. Last, the last two seasons are like a throw ride. Yeah, that's what I hear. Um... No, where I, in Breaking Bad, I'm just at the point where he's uh, got the new lab underneath the dry cleaner. Oh, oh you got to make it out of season three. Once yeah. you get out of season three, you're good. Because, anyway, that's fine. So, that's the big stuff I've been watching. I think it's everybody, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we right. did see Dracula Untold. Oh, we saw Dracula Untold. And how bad was it? Yeah, was it horrid? Um, it wasn't you know, horrid. Okay, you know when you watch a movie? No, I love vampire flicks. Like, like it's just my thing. You know how when you watch a movie and the story is so riveting and it just 
pulls you in and you get lost in the story because that's that's how it's supposed to work. You're supposed to get lost in the story. It felt like most of the scenes were drawing toward that point, but as soon as you got to the point where you were like on the edge of your seat, it cut to a different scene. And you felt like you were just like free falling and you have to get into this different scene to be starting to be pulled back into the movie. How much did and, you pay for tickets? Uh, two, uh, no, five. I don't, did we, we do full Groupon? Price. We paid full price. Oh, I guess we did. It's so like a ten dollar movie ticket. Yeah. Was it a ten dollar movie? I mean, the story was amazing. Yeah. Would you I would pay ten bucks to see it again. No. no. Um, here's here's my take on that, and then I'll talk I just, about the. I wanted to love it so much. Oh, here's my take on it. I'll tell you the other thing we saw. Um, do you know at the beginning of Lord of the Rings, the the Fellowship of the Ring? Just, just stick Go ahead for a second. Where they do the here's how the ring came off of Soromon and ended up somewhere else. And there's that yeah, there's the that first scene. section and they regardless of what you think, they at least did a decent job of showing yeah, as the, much as they the could. setup was good. This movie was a setup for oh, something else and they could have taken the entire movie and smushed it into half an hour and then told us another hour and a half a story. Okay, so uh, Matt said that this so would have like been So it was like Phantom Menace. This <laughs> would have been a great like beginning of a miniseries, if they would have taken this and stuck it on TV and say this is the prequel to a miniseries, it would have been amazing. Yeah, so it yeah, was, I would have been like, was, this is "What's new, next? This is the new untold story of Dracula." And I'm like, "Okay, great. Okay, we got to the end. Where's the rest of it? Because the, it ends with Dracula in modern times hitting on this girl that's clearly played by the same actress as his wife. Who, died. Surprise, dies. Yeah, Woo-hoo. yeah. Woo-hoo. But that's the so story. They did Lord Strahd. Then. Not Dracula. Mm, no. It so it was Dracula the Phantom Menace. So, so then I don't know I he's walking away, and the, the guy that turned him into, into a vampire turns around and starts walking after him and goes, the game is on. And that guy is played by Tywin Lannister. Nice. Who was wasted, because you see him there, and you see him like two other scenes, and that's all of him in the entire freaking movie. Yeah, well, the two other scenes, he's all in makeup and in the dark. And he doesn't really do a whole lot of acting because he just looks hideous and he doesn't have to do a whole lot of Except for the time where he's walking under the sun because he's broken from the curse. Yeah. Either way, it was really disappointing because it could have been more. It wasn't bad. Right. Do you think it would be better if there is a sequel? If there was a sequel, I would be happy. It's not I, Frankenstein, bad. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Um, Honestly, I'd I'd say it's probably a C-plus movie. Not bad. Uh, yeah. I'd, give it, I'd give it two... I'd give it three stars, because it's worth yeah. watching. More like a Pacific Rim bag. Ooh. No, careful. I didn't say it was good. Yeah. Um, on. If it's on Netflix or on Redbox, I would say yeah, it's would worth picking up for a couple of bucks and watching real quick. Yeah. So, the other thing we saw was Gremlins on the big screen. Oh, which that's good. I forgot how scary it is. Like, yeah. I forgot like, how gross and how gooey gory. and... It's not like terrifying scary, but there are some scary parts in Gremlins, and yeah. I, it also yeah. reminded me that that's one of the movies that caused the PG thirteen rating to exist. Yeah, and mm. there were toddlers there. Oh my I was God. like, "Are you guys who joking brings me? their child to a movie like that?" Especially four year a old, toddler. four year old in Spider Man and Spider Man Two, four year old in every one of the Hobbit movies. We only went to see two of them because they were garbage, but. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 Lord of the Rings, I'm sorry. I haven't seen anything after Fellowship of the Rings because it was so bad. Um, the, yeah, yeah, why would you bring a four-year-old to a movie? Yes, there's the uruk and the orcs and they're going to storm and you saw that one guy got an arrow in the eye from Legolas, literally shot it through his head. Yeah, you should take your four-year-old and show him that. Gremlins? No, never. I mean, I've got a nine-year-old son, I can't wait to show him Gremlins. When, 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 you wait right a <laughs> when, when yeah. he's 11 or 12. Right. Uh, but yeah. you, it's because, like you said, you well, don't remember how bad it was. Maybe they just didn't realize how... Well, but the problem is, is I have a 9-year-old son and a 6-year-old daughter. So when the 9-year-old son gets to see it, so does the daughter. Because she's like, well, I'm going to watch two. So, so when she's 13, no way. When she's that's when happen. the mom... Which, by the way, the mom in the Gremlins, I forgot how much of a bad A she was. She just do, kicked the crap out of the Gremlins. <laughs> Shoves one in the microwave and explodes. Yeah, that, oh, man, Puts was... one in the food processor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like those are the things I did remember. It was that's, yeah, that's those, all those fine. Are burning but my, memory. my lord, that's pretty violent and oh, yeah. graphic. And they did great job with special effects. Yeah, there were a couple of parts. <laughs> honestly, it, it held up pretty. Jesse's easy. having <laughs> traumatizing. Oh, yeah. There were a couple of parts where I'm like, oh, that's clearly some bad CG work. Eh. But the rest of it, I was like, you know what? This kind of stands. This time, kind of. 
No, I've seen I could I could remember that <laughs> noise at the very end when he's turning around in the light. Yeah. Okay. Oh. And Gizmo is adorable and ugly all at the same time. Yeah. I mean, just adorable. ugly, but adorable. So that'll do us tonight for the Nerds Domain podcast. Um, you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. You can find us over our website. You should head over to our website and find the new bright, bold, big newsletter yes. sign up because we realized it was really kind of small. You should definitely sign up for our podcast or for our newsletter over there. It's over on the right hand side. It's over on the right hand side. Uh, you can head over, over to nerds do- or patreon.com slash nerds domain. And if you feel like we do something that's worth supporting, you should support us there. Slash And you can find our shirts at slash And we will talk to you guys real soon. This has been a production of the Omega Nerds Network, the network where it's on.